The Cube at Hadoop Summit 2014 is brought to you by anchor sponsor Hortonworks. We do Hadoop. And headline sponsor, WAN Disco. We make Hadoop invincible. Okay, welcome back everyone here. Day three coverage of SiliconANGLE, Wikibon's The Cube, our flagship program. Go out to the events, extract the silicon noise. Wall to wall coverage. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Jeff Kelly, big data analyst at Wikibon. Um, Jeff, uh, day three is kicking off. Let's, let's get into the analysis. What's, uh, what's your take? Two days of meetings, talking to all executives, entrepreneurs, and you know, we've seen three levels of interest here. The startups, the growing companies, and also the big public companies. So in each one, there's a lot of activity, a lot of, a lot of uh, biz dev, a lot of new products. What's your take? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you know, a few things. One, I think some of the uh, conversations I've had here are kind of validating some of the, the data we've been collecting at Wikibon around the adoption of Hadoop. And really, it, I think what we're seeing here is we are very close to a tipping point uh, where a lot of the kind of early adopter POCs and experiments uh, blossom into kind of full-blown production deployments. Uh, we're getting very close to that, that point where Hadoop goes mainstream. Um, you know, we just saw this morning on the keynote panel, uh, companies like Kohl's, uh, talking about their use of Hadoop. So, you know, it's much more, uh, it's being used much more widely than just in some of the Valley companies. So, that's a good sign for sure. I think the other, you know, one of the other big topics here of, over the last couple of days has been the uh, Hadoop uh, and the data warehouse and how they interact and how they uh, relate to one another. Do they complement one another? Will Hadoop uh, replace the data warehouse? And it's really interesting, particularly from a, uh, from the vendor perspective, there's 88 vendors here. Uh, a number of them are the data warehouse heavyweights that you, uh, you know, that are household names. Um, and it's really interesting to watch the different companies try to position their technologies um, relative to Hadoop. Uh, some are kind of tying themselves in knots trying to do that. Others, you know, have a, a more elegant story depending on their technology. So those are two of the big stories. And you know, the, the, the third I think is of course, um, some of the capabilities around Yarn and SQL uh, on Hadoop or in Hadoop, depending on which nomenclature you prefer, uh, making Hadoop, uh, Hadoop go real time, and that relates to what I mentioned earlier about it, just about ready to go mainstream. So Jeff, you had a good show here. Obviously you had a great presence on stage. Merv Adrian and, and uh, yourself, Jeff Kelly from Wikibon, headlining the, uh, the, the keynotes. Um, talk about what you did on the panel, and then I want to talk about the survey that you've been kind of leaking out a little bit here. So <laughs> let's talk about um, uh, your keynote on stage with Doug Cutting. Uh, the inventor of Hadoop and Arun Murthy, um, lead tech guy at Hortonworks, really the players behind, the tech, tech athletes behind Hadoop. Um, what was your agenda? What did you guys talk about and what was the walk sure. away from that? Well, the, yeah, the, the, the main theme of that conversation was about you know, where is Hadoop going? What's the future of Hadoop? Um, and you know, who better to uh, you know, provide their input and their uh, insights on that than really two of the most important people in the community. Doug Cutting, who essentially the founder of Hadoop, the father of Hadoop, uh, founded uh, the technology and the approach back at Yahoo, and of course Arun Murthy, who uh, worked with Doug at Yahoo, who created Hadoop 2, or Yarn, uh, which is an essentially enabling Hadoop to, to, again, go mainstream and be more applicable to different use cases. So uh, it was a really interesting conversation. We talked a lot about how, the, um, how to keep the community vital going forward. Um, you know, over the first about nine years of its lifespan, I mean, the first half of its life, there were no commercial vendors around the Hadoop space. It was all the community. Um, you know, then there were some startups that started getting involved in recent years, and now you see all the big companies here, Microsoft and Teradata and uh, Oracle, SAP, they're all here. So we talked a little bit about how that's going to impact the development of the platform, and there, there are positive and, positives and negatives. Um, you know, there's a lot of money flowing into this market uh, from those companies I mentioned, also VC firms. You know, money can be a, a good thing in, the, in that it spurs development, um, it spurs interest, it shows that uh, really Hadoop is becoming uh, a critical part of uh, the data infrastructure, and it's going to be in the future. Um, but of course, when you've got different, different uh, competing interests from the different large vendors, um, you know that has the potential to take Hadoop in different directions that maybe that might not fit ex with exactly what the open source community might be interested in. So we talked a little bit about that, um, and it's a balancing act. I mean, there's no definite answer how that's going to happen, but um, you know, it's it's important to keep the community aspect. Uh, vital, I, I think, is, is, is really critical uh, for Hadoop to become all that it can. Um, and then, you know, going forward, we talked a little bit about where they saw, thought they saw Hadoop in, you know, five, ten years. Um, and, you know, n not surprisingly, they, they really see it as a mainstream part of the, of the data center. 
um, and it's going to take its rightful place alongside other, other, other technologies. So the Wall Street Journal has an article today from your panel, so good job, congratulations on uh, really generating the kind of attention uh, on a global scale. Wall Street Journal talking about uh, uh, your interview, but also they bring up a good point, which is the skills gap. Sure. Um, talk about that, what did those guys talk about? I mean, this new generation of computer science uh, programmers and developers and architects are coming into the market. What was discussed there and why did the Wall Street Journal focus on, on that panel so much? Well, you know, fam famously McKinsey pointed out a few years ago in, in uh, their big data study that uh, I think the number was we're, we're going to be short about 190,000 data workers, whether that's data scientists or application developers, whatever the case might be. So, you know, this has been a theme or a, or a meme going around in this community for a while because Hadoop is a, a complex technology and in its earlier uh, form, you know, you really needed some particularly advanced skills to work with MapReduce and uh, program in Java, and you know, these were not skills that were widely available. Um, then you think about the data science level, being able to combine the, the statistics capabilities, the, the math capabilities, and as well as more of the, the business acumen, which you need to be a, a, a successful data scientist. Um, you know, there are not a lot of those people around. So you know, that is kind of the, the, the main issue that we've been kind of grappling with in that sense for the last few years. Um, and, and one way I think we're going to overcome that, and we're starting to overcome that, is one, the tools will get, will get easier. They'll abstract away some of the complexity. Uh, but the other thing is, as Doug pointed out in the, uh, in the conversation, you know, the younger generations coming up through universities now, they are being born into this world where they're comfortable with Hadoop and MapReduce, and they understand that data, uh, being data savvy is critical no matter what your line of work uh, going forward if you're a knowledge worker of any kind. So, uh, you know, as that generation comes up, that's one way we're going to close this gap. Um, and I think that was Doug's, Doug's main point. I like how the comment about they were kind of saying Java might not be the, the young guns uh, language of choice. I think that's true. We've said that on the queue many times. Um, it's a great panel, great keynote panel with those two legends uh, in, the, in the industry. It's fun, you know, watching the industry grow up with those guys, you know, just normal, normal guys doing their thing. Now they're celebrities. Yeah, well, I know it's interesting too. I mean, there was always, there's a sub, subtext of, you know, and I think people were wondering, we've got Hortonworks and, and Cloudera on stage together, and there was a, a joke going around in the green room, which we should have got those sumo wrestler outfits for the two guys. But, you know, I wanted to make sure in that conversation that it was not a, you know, a vendor food fight, because these are two, you know, they do represent their, their respective companies, but they're, you know, really, you know, I think even more important uh, members and leaders of the community. Um, so I wanted to kind of keep it on that level. And well, I mean, I Doug Cloudera, even though he works that. for Cloudera, it's very clear he's he is pure open source guy. He's yeah. not one of these guys that you know leans to uh, you know plays his jersey with his team. He is pure community guy. And Arun, obviously, you know, being one of the co-founders of HortonWorks, uh, is all about the open source. So two, those two guys deserve a lot of credit. Uh, independent of the companies that they work for. I think, you know, we've seen that, and we could say, you know, with absolute certainty, both guys stand up, awesome guys. So, uh, Doug and Arun, fantastic people. Uh, it's great to follow them and see their work get recognized on a sort of global scale. Um, next question I want to ask you is, the survey that you're um, showing people that hasn't been released yet, it's coming out, the exclusive uh, Wikibon survey that you put together, okay, narrowed down, very targeted. Uh, what are some of the results there, and how is that playing out? What's some of the feedback? Uh, well, the feedback's been good so far. Um, you know, we've been, as you say, kind of, uh, you know, sprinkling in some of our insights from that survey on the show over the last couple of days and on Twitter. Um, you know, we'll be formally releasing the results uh, shortly. We don't have an exact date yet, but uh, we're going through the results now, and uh, we will make those available to the community. Um, but you know, some of the interesting findings, uh, you know, I think relate to what we were just talking about. The uh, the point I made about kind of very, being very close to this tipping point where Hadoop's going to start to go mainstream. And one of the interesting findings we found. Um, you know, among Hadoop practitioners, people who have deployed Hadoop in their enterprise, um, only about 25% are actually paying customers of, of a Cloudera, a Hortonworks, a MapR, et cetera. Uh, majority are actually using not even a free distribution from one of those vendors, but uh, roll your own uh, Apache Hadoop. Um, so that tells me we are, you know, there's a huge opportunity there. I mean, th I guess there's two ways to look at it. One, you could say if you're one of these, one of these Hadoop vendors, like, wow, we, we, we need to do a better job, we need to start ramping up the, uh, the revenue. On the other hand, look at that opportunity. Um, and also keep in mind that our, our survey was probably a little bit more forward-leading than a lot of the other analyst firms, some of their work. You know, we, we kind of deal with more, more of the cutting edge technology and, and early adopters. So if you, you know, we're going to apply some of our statistical methods to this, and I think when you really take a step back, it's the, the actual number of the percentage of Hadoop practitioners that are paying customers is probably even lower than that, so there's a huge opportunity here. Um, and if you couple that with all the talk we're hearing at this show about 
um, Hadoop being ready for, for, for the mainstream, um, that's why I think we were at this tipping point. Um, some of the other findings, you know, one interesting finding that we haven't talked a lot about at this show, it hasn't been a real big focus of the show, is the use of uh, the public cloud to support big data deployments. Um, around 56% of the respondents to our, our survey uh, who have deployed big data technology in one form or another are using the public cloud. Um, and another 24% plan to use the public cloud. So that's an interesting, um, you know, we, we talk a lot about at Wikibon the, the convergence of cloud and big data, um, along with application development being agile. Um, we don't hear a lot about it at shows like this, but I think that's the direction we're moving, and it's clear from our data uh, that that's what practitioners are looking at. So what's your plans for the survey? Take us through your uh, roadmap. Are you going to take it on the road? Are you going to publish it? What's the timetable? Sure. What are some of the activities around? Are you going to do follow-on surveys? A lot of folks have asked me, one, where's the survey? How do I get my hands on it? And two, can you do more with it? And are you going to do more? Absolutely, so uh, you know, we just wrapped up the survey, so right now we're kind of going through the data at a high level. Um, you know, once this show wraps up, my, my next big focus is going to be digging really deep into the data, doing a lot of cross-tabulations and finding some of those really great insights. Uh, and indeed, we're going to take it on the road, we're going to uh, be visiting a lot of the people in this room at their respective companies and kind of sharing some of the insights. Uh, and then we will, of course, publish on Wikibon uh, some of the top level results so the community can get a, get a look at that. And then uh, I suspect we'll be getting a lot of inquiries from our clients to dig even deeper into the data, and that's uh, something we plan to do. Uh, and then in Q3, we're going to do another survey. We're going to follow up on this. And that's really our plan at Wikibon is to uh, kind of double down on our uh, survey and essentially data collection work because uh, we find that's what a lot of our clients are interested in, what are the communities interested in. Okay, it's day three. We're going to dig in a little bit deeper today. Today, day three is usually the day we kind of relax. A lot of activities kind of like uh, trying to get the energy going here, but mainly we're going to dig into some of the uh, deeper conversations around the three areas we've been exploring at this show. You know, the startup, you know, series A, B companies, the series C funded, growing, rapidly growing ventures, and obviously the big, uh, big, the big whales, the public companies. All three of those theaters are really pumped right now and active, all doing well in business. We're going to, we're going to have CEOs and CTOs from all three of those sectors coming in and sharing with us their insights, their experiences, their objectives, and how they see this world playing out in the Hadoop big data landscape. This is theCUBE. We we'll go out to the events, extract a signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Kelly. We'll be right back with our first guest, day three, right after this short break.